Hello Internet. We're standing outside the community garden at work. Uh, today I wanted to give you a quick tour of what's inside and show you my plot. So let's take a look. The garden itself is surrounded by an eight foot tall deer fence, which does a pretty good job. Uh, it has a large gate and our logo. Uh, so it's an employee benefit association with about 20 members for the gardening part. Just inside the garden, just inside the gate, uh, we have a few compost bins um, that are pretty actively turned over by the members and we're developing a, a pretty nice bit of compost in them. Uh, we also have uh, grassy areas with plenty of room for more plots. So the garden is divided into um, quads, so uh, clusters of four 10 foot by 10 foot plots. Um, so there's room for, I don't know, at least a dozen or a few dozen more uh, members or plots. Uh, so there are a few sunflowers in the garden, uh, some trellis work, flowers, lots of flowers, some beans and tomatoes. Um, we also have a tool shed uh, with a lawnmower, a rototiller, uh, and several hand tools. Um, and there's a uh, water tank at the high point of the garden that is uh, fed from a pond just downhill with a solar powered pump uh, so we have to so it's gravity feeds into the hoses so we have to be careful of our consumption because the solar powered pump only goes so far but it does a pretty nice job supplying us with all the water that we need to keep our plants growing so got a few more flowers and some butterflies um, and we we'll keep strolling around the garden I don't, haven't counted exactly how many plots there are, but it's a pretty active community. Uh, this is the corner of my plot. Uh, that spray bottle is for water, not chemicals. Uh, so this is, we try to adhere to organic growing practices and sustainable, sustainable gardening. Uh, so the use of pesticides is uh, strongly discouraged. Um, anyway, so this is my plot. Uh, so. I have a 10 by 10 plot with three raised beds and a depressed, uh, two depressed walkways, although my tomato plants have pretty well overgrown <laughs> one of the walkways. And then I have a uh, bean pole trellis uh, built up. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the plants. So I originally started this when I spent a bit too much time watching YouTube videos with hot sauces and wanted to grow some hot peppers to try myself. So on the first row, we have a chocolate habanero that was picked up at a nursery in Ohio a month, month and a half ago. Um, the soil here has a lot of clay in it, so that one hasn't, isn't really succeeding as well as I would like. Um, but the summer is yet young and I might try transplanting it to give it a, a better shot. So we'll see how it, how it does. Next to it is a red habanero that I started growing from seed back in April, uh, March or April. Um, and so like the nursery habanero, it's, has, the root system hasn't grown very big because of the clay and it's kind of struggling, hasn't produced any flowers and certainly no fruit yet. Then there's another red habanero. This one I picked up as a seedling from a local nursery a couple months ago and have transplanted it uh, at least twice. Uh, the first time didn't do a great job. The second time I added a whole bunch of potting soil and fertilizer and it has succeeded in setting roots, flowering, and it's starting to grow some nice looking fruit. Uh, so hopefully uh, that's gonna be, oh, that's going to be ripe pretty soon and ready to eat. Um, so I'm excited by the prospect of that. Uh, there, it seems to be occasionally dropping fruit or some of its fruit has um, insect damage or some other pests eating it. So I've been plucking off some of the fruit before they ripen. Um, but it's doing, it's doing all right. Next, we have a ghost pepper that I also bought from the same nursery at the same time as that red habanero. 
Um, so this ghost is uh, was featured in the last video I did where I ate its first ripe fruit. Um, so this plant is very successful um, and has been uh, fruiting and flowering quite a bit. Uh, and it looks like, so I've been watching this, this fruit on the end and I think that that pepper is just about ready to eat. So, well, it looks like it's not the only one. Uh-oh. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so I'll give you a kind of a walk around it a little bit more. Uh, so you can see some of the other fruit on that pepper. So it's a relatively small pepper plant. I think it's been hampered by uh, my newness to gardening and not giving it the optimal conditions. Um, and also the clay here is not great for sustaining peppers, but it's doing well enough to grow quite a few uh, pepper fruits. So it's doing all right. Um, and then the next plant is a tomato plant that I also started from seed. So these seeds I bought from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, back in March and sprouted a whole bunch of pepper plant or of tomato plants. Um, so they're cherry tomatoes. Some of them have already ripened. Um, some of them have been eaten by probably field mice or some other pests. So that's no good. Moving along, we have, uh, let's see, a, sorry, walked right past it. A, uh, sweet million tomato plant. So these are the small sweet cherry tomato, or yeah, cherry tomatoes. Um, so this one I picked up in Ohio about the same time as the first uh, chocolate habanero. Um, so pretty late in the season um, and it's grown some and has been setting some fruit. So I'm looking forward to those ripening. All right, so that's the end of the first row. Onto the second row, I have uh, two more cherry tomato plants. So these are, well, Definitely, yeah. So the first cherry tomato plant has some, some fruit on it, so that's looking good and looking like some of them are ripe and ready to pick. Um, backing up, there's another tomato plant that's supposed to be the same as the other ones, but the fruit on it are substantially larger. Um, so I think it might have, I don't know what it is, uh, it's a, a guest seed that was in the packet. Uh, but I'm not disappointed. The tomatoes look good, and I had one ripen, and I tried it. It was very tasty, so I'm not disappointed. The next plant uh, is a pepper. Um, started from seed back in March or April um, from uh, Pepper Joe's, and I honestly don't know what it is. So I ordered a few pepper seeds from Pepper Joe, and they all came at the same time, and I tried to be diligent about labeling them and keeping them straight, but this one does not look like any of the others. So if you know what it is, uh, I would appreciate help identifying it. Moving on down the row, I have um, two Scotch bonnets. So these are red Scotch bonnets grown from seed from Pepper Joe's. Um, they are just about ripe, and I don't know if you can see the the shape of these peppers, um, but they are very much like little little hats that a Scotsman might wear, um, or uh, the kind of caps in doctoral regalia that you might see uh, marching across stage. So those are pretty fun shape, and they're getting pretty large, and I'm hoping that they ripen to a nice shade of red soon. The last plant on the first row is a potato plant that I grew uh, using a red potato from the supermarket. Um, so it was, I was kind of surprised when it actually grew eyes and started sprouting because it was not organic. It was, uh, which I guess is heresy in this garden, but it was just a potato that I tried on a whim uh, and it is doing pretty well. So it has lodged or fallen over in two thunderstorms. So I've put up the mound of dirt at the at the base uh, and also staked it to try to keep it upright uh, until the plant dies and the potatoes are ready to harvest. So we'll see how that goes. 
onto the final row. Um, this is another uh, sweet million cherry tomato plant that has grown much more enthusiastically than the uh, one at the end of the first row. It has some fruit on it, uh, less than the first one. I guess it's been focusing its energy on growing, but it also has some fruit that's starting to ripen. So that's pretty exciting. And then there are two more of the cherry tomato plants um, with good, I don't know, fruit that's a bit larger than a golf ball, but similar kind of ballpark. Uh, and then finally we have the bean poles with the um, plastic mesh trellis between them. So the first plant that's growing on that is a pole lima bean that I picked up from the local nursery uh, about a month ago. It was looking pretty sad <laughs> and neglected, but I put it in the, transplanted it with a good dose of potting soil and it's been growing. So it started out about um, that high and it's grown up the trellis. So it's, it's doing pretty well. Um, and then I'll try to come around the back side and take a look at them. So we also have a few uh, rattlesnake bean seedlings. So these were grown from the rattlesnake uh, beans themselves, uh, directly planted into the soil. Um, and they have sprouted and uh, seem to be growing pretty well. There's also a couple of, well, four broccoli plants that uh, suffered pretty badly at the hands of a woodchuck that got into the garden, but have been, so I, I don't expect a whole lot from them, but I can't bear to uproot them quite yet. So I'll let them grow a little longer and see if they produce any fruit. All right, so that is the end of the garden tour. Uh, thanks for joining me. And until next time, so long.